In my last video, I started my biggest project yet, which is this robot dog. I ordered some parts and I did some tests. Right after making that video, I actually went on a vacation. I've just checked the parts for my robot dog just arrived. Carbon fiber tubes and also the servo motors. Now I'm back home and I have the whole summer in front of me. I'm gonna spend all of it building this robotic dog. Today is gonna be pretty exciting. I got all the parts here. This linear rail, which is gonna hold the test leg. Three different diameters of carbon fiber tube. Some aluminum extrusions, a clamp, the ESPs, and also the new servo motors. The goal for today is gonna be turning these parts into a leg prototype. So I'm gonna start CAD modeling and get back to you once I have something to show. This is what I came up with. It took me about a day of work. So this is the like, it's just these two carbon fiber tubes. The like is gonna move like this. I've tried to make it as simple as possible. So I'm using uh, these servo mounts, which I've used in my robotic arm. And I've made these simple clamps for the carbon fiber tube. The foot of the robot is gonna be made out of TPU. And this whole leg is mounted on the guard. So it's gonna be able to jump like this if the motors are powerful enough. Which I hope they are because I've spent $80 on this whole test stand. And it's gonna be completely useless if the motors aren't strong enough. So that would be pretty funny. This is actually my second prototype. So this is the first one. Whenever I model a part, I usually start modeling it. I see it looks like shit and then I scrap the whole design and remake it. First I'm gonna start with the test stand. I got these two extrusions and they should come together like that. The rail is gonna be just bolted to this extrusion. Connecting them is pretty straightforward. I got special nuts that fit into this wedge, but to be able to tighten bolts to them I need to drill two holes to this extrusion. So I'm gonna scramble through my old tools and try to find a drill bit. This is an old trick I learned at school where you can use the caliper as a marker. So I measure 10 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to use a few of these nuts. I like these aluminum extrusions. I've never really worked with metal that much. I'm always glad when I can. Okay, so number rail. When I was buying it, I thought it was going to be much bigger in reality. It almost fits into this gap, so I hope that won't be a problem. Nice. It doesn't look the best, I think but it's uh, functional. Now I'm gonna make the leg and attach it to the guard. These are all the bars for a single leg and also some additional parts for mounting it to the cart. It weighs maybe as much as a single servo. New day is here. I wanted to finish this yesterday, but then I told myself that sleep is quite important. I printed two end stops. So these are just from TPU. They are supposed to prevent this cart from going off the rail. Before I can assemble the leg, first I need to calibrate these servos. Let me show you what I mean. These servo motors can move 270 degrees and I want to get most out of that range. So I'm going to set the natural positions of these servo motors. So this upper servo motor, I'm gonna set its natural position to be 0 degrees. 
so it's gonna move in about this range and for the second servo motor i want it to be able to move all the way from here to here so i'm gonna set its natural position like this and it's gonna be offset by 90 degrees i've uploaded the code to esp 42 so now if i flip the switch it's gonna set the throw angle to its middle position. I want the throw arm to be exactly straight. And with this second throw, I actually want to offset that by 90 degrees. So I want the middle position to be here. I'm gonna check with uh, Fusion 2. So this is the second motor and I want to have it pointed downwards like that. Now I'm gonna correct these two offsets. This one I'm gonna add six degrees and this one I'm gonna subtract six degrees. Now it's exactly 90 degrees. The sewers are calibrated and I can start assembling the leg. Before we dive in, I want to show you my sponsor, which I think you'll actually find useful. PCBWay is celebrating its 11th year anniversary. They are actually running an event where you get a bunch of insane discounts. They get good discounts for PCB services and also for pretty much everything else. Injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, CNC, everything is highly discounted. They also got a lottery and the first prize is actually a robot dog. Yeah, it's very nice. They also got Raspberry Pi, oscilloscopes, a lot of useful stuff in this prize pool. You can increase your chances by collecting six cards. I'm gonna collect the first one. Nice. I'm also gonna put this link into my description and if you use it, we can both get a $5 coupon. So if you're building a project and you wanna pick up a bunch of coupons, get a multimeter, PCBs or anything manufacturing wise, now it's the time. Now I can choose the length of this link. Let's do 150 millimeters. For the foot, I printed these little caps. So the leg is basically done. Now I'm going to just mount it to the leg stand. It doesn't look the best with these carbon fiber tubes sticking out. I want to test different lengths of this linkage to make sure I get the best power output. So the leg is finished and now we just need to make it move. There's two ways to do this. I can either control the joint angles, so the leg would move like this, or I can control the foot position, and that way I could make this foot move in a straight line like this. Controlling the joint angles directly is called forward kinematics, and controlling the foot position is called inverse kinematics. To get the inverse kinematics, we're gonna need to solve a bunch of equations. If you want to see the math, the code explanation and how the wireless communication with ESP32 works, I'm going to post that on my second channel. There's three things I need to do for the electronics. I want to control the leg wirelessly. These chips actually have wireless communication inside them, so I just need to code it. Then I'm going to add some buttons and a potentiometer. And finally, we're going to upload the inverse kinematics function. I've actually already coded the wireless communication and it works flawlessly. I've been testing these new ESP32s, which are from a original manufacturer. The transmitter is all the way down there. You can see that it received the values pretty well. Nice. Since we established the communication between these two ESP boards, we can move on to the electronics components. So this is the wiring diagram. The receiver ESP is going to be powered by a 2S LiPo battery, which outputs about 7 to 8 volts, which is going to be stepped down with a bug converter to 5 volts. It's gonna set the angle of servo motors by digital pins. The servo motor is just gonna be powered directly by the LiPo batteries. For the transmitter, that's what you can see right here, I'm gonna have a button and a potentiometer. In the code, I'm gonna hard code a minimal height, so that's gonna be when the leg is just crouched like that. And the maximum height, I'm gonna set with the potentiometer. And then if I click the button, the leg gonna just jerk like that to the minimal height. And if I click it again, it should move as fast as possible to the maximum height. So it should extend quickly and hopefully jump. 
and here I have it wired on this uh, transmitter. By the way, all of these files, the code, get models, everything is gonna be on my Patreon for free. I also wired up the receiver. I got two S Lightroom battery, seven volts goes through a switch and powers uh, this line. To power the ESP, I need five volts, so I step it down with this bug converter. And here is the five volt power line, which powers the ESP through this cable. So the ESP runs the code, it receives the values from the transmitter, it calculates the desired height, the joint angles with the inner schematics function, and then outputs two digital pin signals, which are going to go into the servo motors. I just finished writing the inner schematic function. I basically just rewrote the equations and I had to make sure that I use radians in the calculations and then in the end I transfer everything to the grease. First I'm gonna power the transmitter with my power bank. Looks like the receiver works. The light is blinking, so it's receiving values, I guess. I'm just gonna plug in the first motor. I powered this calf motor. <laughs> Very nice. Test two, I added the middle angle offset. <sighs> Test three, I haven't changed anything, but I also worked up this servo. Test for I increase the minimal height and I also remove this foot so it doesn't fly across my room again. Test 5 I flipped this motor angle. Test 377. To calculate these motor angles, I'm actually using a Riemann hypothesis which I just solved. Yeah, just kidding. I think there's something really wrong with the inverse kinematics function, so I'm gonna take a break and maybe do this off camera. This is the first real test. First I'm gonna try to change the maximum height. Now I'm gonna switch to the minimum height with my button. Fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, I can hear some burnt electronics. I'm gonna have to open a window. New day is here. I replaced this old burn switch with uh, this new one. This piece of shit took me hour and a half to solder. Fuck soldering. I also added this function move, I calculate the inner kinematics, add the angle offsets and then set the zero angles. Before I had it in the main loop, now I just type this single line and it's the same thing. So the main problem I see is that uh, this leg doesn't move straight, it goes to the left. The TPU feed is trash, it provides no traction at all. I added this carbon fiber tube, so when the leg goes up, the tube prevents it from sliding to the left. And I'm going to double these lengths. This leg is huge, it's gonna be basically at the end stop. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna test the jumping. Predictions time. Well, from what I've seen before, my confidence isn't that high. I think it's gonna jump about that much. This leg is obviously just a prototype. I'm gonna make a lot of upgrades, for example, adding these springs and things like that. If you want any files from this project, like the CAD models, the code, the code for ESP, wireless communication, everything is gonna be on my Patreon for free. And after this video, I'm probably gonna increase the price because instead of getting a normal job, I decided I'm gonna spend my whole summer building this robot and also one other project. So I hope you're okay with that. So this was part one of my robot dog series and I can't wait what this will become. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in part two.